I've always had a really strong interest in what is commonly known as the deep web. Although the deep web has some good uses, it also has an incredibly dark side to it too. The dark web is a small corner of the deep web, containing the stereotypical content that the deep web is notorious for. I took my first steps into this little excavation of mine, into the darkest parts of anonymous sites, under the surface of the web, in an attempt to undermine the stereotype that the deep web is more of a home to dark, illegal websites than it is anything good. Well, I came out of this with more than I could ever have expected. And now my view on humanity in general has forever been changed. The start of my uh, trip took me quite a while, about three to four weeks, to get enough information to start really delving deep into what I will now refer to as the dark web. That small corner that is basically the house of horrors. Lots of talking around, honing information from chat rooms, and taking lots of notes. I even had to make a couple of phone calls to some more than shady individuals. Not a comfortable experience. By the end of my trek of gathering as much information as possible, and getting a good contact list, I took my first steps into the outer layer the dark web, so to speak. The hard part is that once you get deeper, a lot of sites have ever-changing URLs, extensive invitation queues, and, at times, pricey entrance costs that may or may not end up as cash spent on a phony operation. A lot of it is luck, meeting people at the right place and at the right time and taking good notes. I had a good streak of luck, and took good notes, enough to get me to the places I entered. But what I did notice is that, once I got into the first site that I'll talk about, it became much easier to get into the other sites, as it was much more freely talked about, and information was passed around much more. Chat rooms in the dark web are basically an information honey hole. So, the first site, Centrix. Centrix was one of the more well-known general markets, so to speak. A good example to compare it to would be Agoratha or the Silk Road. Now, Centrix from what I learned via lots of questions on the chat room over the course of a couple of days, has been around for about 11 months and has been untouched by any means of being shut down. Which surprises me because it has everything from Agoratho or the Silk Road, but to a much greater extent and a lot more variety. What some sites dedicate their whole selling product to be Centrix had subcategories for. Just a few brief examples here. Snuff films, bulk drugs, all varieties. Fake everything, IDs, licenses, you name it. A very censored section of CP. Various illegally obtained memberships, Netflix, pornography, and so on. And the list goes on. Another thing that is a bit chilling is the fact that they took a great effort to crack down on scams. The big deal on sites like Agoratha and Silk Road was that they had a lot of scam vendors. This site didn't. And they had a lot of proof to back it up that I will not go into detail on. I also met a guy in a chat room who was nice, <laughs> as far as that can go for an active dark web user like himself. 
who verified some of the links I'd collected and vaguely sent me in the direction of other sites for my personal use. This was a great help and it led me to my next site which from the uh, illegality and general morals of the site is what I consider the next layer or gate into the dark web. So my second site Brink Warehouse Hey a site with a normalish name Brink Warehouse was actually quite fascinating not horrific to any great extent but it did have a different kind of dark backlash Brink Warehouse was a virtual warehouse of textual guides notes leaked documents and torrented books one that was released online a day after it was published by quite a popular author now as a summary this might seem all right but take into account that the guides included things like how to make a drone based homemade explosive and how to kidnap adolescents in their sleep illegal leaked documents galore anywhere from US classified cases to foreign affairs this also included guides on illegally modifying weapons joining terrorist groups guides to scripting and nulling bank accounts and so on and so forth not a fun sight the site I headed to next is where it starts to get really formally creepy the site with no name I got access to this site which I consider to be the start of the darkest of the dark web from a chat room user called Francis Stern 344 on chit chat a very common deep web chat room site that most of you have probably already stopped off in well talk comes to talk and we end up on the topic of snuff films how common they are where they're usually filmed and why and so on I gain his trust we resume this chat in a private room that he had please keep in mind that only getting information was my main reason for chatting I am not into snuff films though they do fascinate me we talked for a good 20 minutes before without me having to even ask he hooked me up with a site now I'm just going to use a small portion of the URL to name it so we're going to call this site 5611 now this site 5611 required an invite extensive registration questioning and a one-on-one -on -one meeting with what I assumed was the site director or admin this person was a harsh motherfucker and the stern punishments for breaking the site's rules were laid out in full the guy who invited me Francis turn 344 I guess was a long timer on 5611 and had permission to let me take a tour of the site now I did ask for a formal site name for future reference but they said a title would only make it easier to identify them which they did not want to happen 5611 had a small membership that he said the runners of the site tried to cater to very fondly as membership is approximately $350 a month upon entering the site I had to check the are you older than 18 box for the fifth time since I'd started signing up finally I was in the site's design was bland and blocky with a pure white background and very blocky close together writing in the top right corner there were options to log out add funds to the balance and then a small wallet emoticon that displayed an empty client-side balance but those things were barely on my mind 
My mind was on the center of the screen. In a single row down the center. Single frames with captions and a description took up most of the screen. The top one had a still of a table with various blades and blunt weapons laid out. The title, 24 year old female, sleeping, suggestion, death, with a price tag along the side. A timer in green text was counting down, 1151. 11.50, 11.49. Under the timer, in the same green font, was 78 out of 100. A couple of seconds later, the 78 turned into a 79. Realization hit me in the face like a bat. This was a paid snuff sight. With a shaky hand, I scrolled down through the seemingly endless snapshots and captions. One caught my eye. Quick watch. Homeless. 0 0.22 Bitcoin. Large view. Low quality. It was like an attention whoring YouTube title, but it seemed to be working. In the eerie green font, 783 out of a thousand was displayed, a jaw-dropping number in my eyes. I decided this needed to be documented, so I did a quick transaction, put 30 Bitcoin cents in my site wallet and clicked on the arrow to enter. It took a minute or two to complete the transaction, and after about a five minute buffer, I was in the showing. There was no chat box, only a slightly lighter border of grey and static. The same green timer was now in the bottom right of the screen. Three, two, one. The square blurred, revealing a city street. What seemed to be Arabic writing was on various shop signs and advertisements. Light from a street post gave a fuzzy glow to the scene. The cameraman, from the position of the camera, seemed to be leaning against a wall. The shot focused on a dinky red junker on the street's curb. From the side of the camera's view, a gloved finger points towards the entrance of a dark alley where a man lays on his side, like a breathing pile of rags, obviously homeless and alone. The finger makes a motion towards the car, and three men quietly exit the car and walk along the storefronts towards the sleeping homeless figure. The quality is totally shit, but the scene can still be made out and is enhancing my horrid imagination about what is to come. About five meters from the homeless victim, the lanky group of thugs pull out plain white theatre masks from their jackets, take out various small weapons, and pounce around the corner onto the innocent, unsuspecting victim. The camera picks up the quick shuffling of feet as the cameraman runs towards the scene, catching the thugs thrashing and stomping the man from his slumber. Cut him up! The cameraman's thickly accented voice commands the thugs, who begin to slash the victim at a wild speed, like hyenas tearing into caught prey. Blood sprays onto the wall and onto the thugs' white masks. It is horrible. My stomach barely holds on. I can't take it. Locking off Tor. I take a few more security measures and shut off my computer, taking some deep breaths and sipping from a cause light. Now, on to my last visit to the dark web, Candy Palace. 
I logged on about a week later and never even thought to go back on 5611. I never contacted anyone from my past sites and I knew in my heart that this would be my last visit to any site on the deep web. I was thoroughly motivated to not go on because with 5611 that had really been in my mind to be the last straw. I'd proven to myself that the dark web, even though it has some good parts, is really just a beacon of humanity's horrific actions. I'd proven to myself that sites like 5611 and others do exist, but I just felt the need to cover the last huge part of the dark web that is, in my mind, the worst of it all child pornography. Candy Palace is a huge site. Do some digging and get some sources and unfortunately you will find it. From the videos I've come to the conclusion that it is all hosted in one location in a foreign country. I always wondered that if there are all these snuff films and child sex slave dungeons that are often spoken about, that there would have to be a suitable amount of missing children cases and unsolved murders to go along with them. Some research and asking around concluded that many of the film murders and child porn director rings are in fact in foreign countries, where getting away with these kinds of actions is a piece of cake, in the words of an aspiring director in a Candy Palace chat room. I will not go into specific detail about any one video on Candy Palace. I'll only lay down some basic stats and descriptions and let you find the rest if you so please. The main chat room had several hundred chatters in total between the various subchats. They actually had a very detailed profile of each child. An example was Tatasa. Nine years old, black hair, and then include a list of, if I remember correctly, 83 videos she starred in and counting. The children were usually smothered in makeup and, besides for what seemed like a designated two or three stars, not extremely physically hurt via evident meeting. <sighs> Double penetration, binding. Gay. Forced one-on-one, -on -one, knife, roleplay, chamber and dungeon were the top video tags. Each video had one or two tags. If I remember correctly, there were a total of 17 stars. Nobody ever brought up anything about whether they were kidnapped, imported or imprisoned. All anyone cared about was watching. So getting information on that topic was hard. There were no grimy bedrooms or warehouses or basements. Nothing that fits the common stereotype. Most of the scenes were filmed in various sets, such as era-styled dungeons or surgery rooms. It was basically Pornhub with a pink, white, black colour scheme and 6 to 12 year olds. It is a nightmare. Conclusion. I never look at people the same. Throughout doing this research-oriented trip through the dark web, my view on humanity has changed. Every video I watched in the name of research chinked away at my emotions, often leaving me crying. My curiosity broke me, and it's taken me nearly a year to fully recover. This story constitutes, I guess, my case file for my research on this subject. Now, before you launch Tor and find these sites, please know this. There is nothing enjoyable, entertaining, or at all suitable on this network. 
You will be left in tears. You will be scarred. And worst of all, you will never view others the same again.